Welcome back, listeners, to That's a Good Card. Today, y'all will have the challenge of getting me to say, that's a good card. While y'all will be doing the convincing, I'll be playing the devil's advocate. If you're interested in some more Tag C content, check out our Patreon in the link down below. We have started adding a new series that takes us back in time to look at some of the cards that we've reviewed in the past and kind of see where they stack up in the meta today. So if you're interested in more content, check out the Patreon below. Also, now's a good time to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you're listening to us on YouTube. And please, 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 please leave a comment below with your thoughts on today's topic, as well as suggestions for our next card. All right, yeah, let's get started, but with a twist. Ooh. So from a lot of the comments that we received in our last video, obviously a lot has changed <laughs> since the last time we recorded an episode with the announcement of some really impactful bans to Commander. Those bans were Nadu, Winged Wisdom, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, and of course, Dockside Extortionist. So we had multiple commenters ask us some questions about whether or not we were going to talk about this. And we didn't want to make a full video on it, but we do want to touch on the subject. So we decided to scrap our that's a good card question mark <laughs> segment at the end of the video so that we can just have some time to talk about this. So uh, we're going to pull up some of those comments and kind of just give our straight up response to them. So the first question um, or multiple questions comes from Claire and Claire commented a couple of questions. Yeah, I just want to get your responses here. So uh, the first question was, as competitive players, where do you see this going? So I think in this general sense, we're talking about just the future of CEDH. So just generally speaking, where do you see this going? Personally, I honestly think CEDH as a whole will be fine, right? Whether or not and I don't know how much time people spend on the internet, right? But like, you know, there are definitely some groups, um, some differing ones. And if you've been on the internet at all following, like there was a splinter group and then now this whole thing. And the sense I get from it kind of like really watching from a, a kind of a little bit afar is mm -hmm. a lot of passion. Oh, yeah. That fills me with some hope, right? And like, I, I know that there are people like really working hard and I'm just really interested in seeing and kind of being a part of like where that goes uh, as a player you know the bands came and i played that that night like uh with the new band list just to see how it goes yep what about you i mean i think i i think similarly i will say that i definitely took the initial shock of the bands a lot worse than you did yeah uh, me being a main of corvold faker's king which was a deck that was really focused around dockside in general uh, i was in shock and at the time of this recording now, we're a few days removed, and I have a level head. I think that there is hope for Corvold still. I've been talking with some of the Corvold pilots in the Pacific Northwest, as well as Eric Mad King, and just, you know, I'm gaining some hope that Corvold is going to be okay. Yeah. Is it going to be as explosive and fast as it was before? Hell no. But it might be, you know, just as fun for me to, to pilot that deck. So I think that I have more of a cool head. And I agree with you that I think that CEDH is, is going to be okay. One last thing I'll say on it. It's like, I, I'm hopeful because I'm hopeful for, hopeful for a deck like Corvold because I think with the bands and the intent here, it slows down everything, right? It really slowed down Corvold. Hmm. But like, I think that the games are going to go an extra turn or two. Like, uh, you play way more tournaments. Um, how many turns do you feel like most games kind of go, even when they go to time? I mean, it's super skewed. I, I am in the Pacific Northwest. We are the slowest meta, and I don't think it's particularly close. The majority of our games are going to time and taking a lot of turns. There's a lot of draw pass. There's a lot of Thrasios. There's a lot of Kenrith. So I'm the wrong person to ask, but I can say from like experience of going to larger scale tournaments, I mean, maybe we're going to five turns. Maybe. So I do agree with you that I think that everything is going to slow down and go um, an extra turn a bit. Yeah, yeah, probably go an extra turn or or, or two. Um, but if anything, I think that it'll just change the the lay of the land, I agree. the number of decks that we're going to see. Um, and that kind of leads into the second question that uh, our commenter Claire asks, which is, what road could this pave for future bans? So that's an interesting one. I think that this kind of opens up the floodgates a little bit. And I think that it may cause concern for collectors. Just in general, collecting really high ticket, really powerful cards. It sucks that, you know, from a collector standpoint and investing standpoint, it sucks. But at the same time, 
you know, these are game pieces. I know people have heard that many, many times. So you kind of just take on that risk every time you, you, you buy a piece of this game that, you know, you're kind of at Watsy's will. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Like, but at the end of the day, I, I think that this any change that's going to be made has to be approved through Watsy. So the people who are pointing blame at the rules committee or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you got to kind of look past that and realize that <laughs> that oh, yeah. Watsy is the one pulling the strings. So regardless if it's separate or not, it has to go through them. So what's your thoughts on on just like bands moving forward in general? Oof, uh, I'm going to be real honest here. I have no idea, right? Like this one, uh, uh, I'll walk you through how I learned about it, literally through Kyle. He, We have a group chat with some uh, of our, our friends that we play with, uh, local for uh, for a lot of us. And um, I honestly was like, no way. I literally woke up, turned yeah, over. Everybody thought it was a joke. I, I So I honestly have no idea, right? Uh, honestly, I think that like... The rules committee is just like one of those like monks that kind of come out only every couple years, really, and then they're gonna they're just gonna go back into their like into their kingdom and probably not do anything for a while. I think that this is really shaking a lot of people, uh, including the rules committee. Yeah. Like, I think they understood what they were doing, and while they were prepared for it, nothing prepares you for like some of the the fallout that they're kind of dealing yeah. with right now. And um, I do think this is gonna be the biggest ban that we're gonna see. For a while? For many, 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 many years. I think so, too. Yeah. Uh, I think that this was kind of just like a, a show everybody what they can do, but I don't think that it's necessary. I think that this is going to like like terraform the landscape to how they want it to be. And then from here on out, I don't think that we're going to really see a big chunk of really powerful cards banned. Agreed. I think that it's just going to be like, oh, new set came out. Whoops, this is accidentally broken. Whoops, okay, we banned that. So <laughs> I think that that, and that's kind of what a lot of people think the rules committee should be for in the first place, right? Is like, oh, something slipped through the cracks that we're not used to, that is definitely too broken, and it was an oversight. Rules committee can correct that. At least that's how I envision the rules committee to be. Um, but at the same time, with every new card that's printed, it affects other cards obviously synergies combos all that stuff so um, you know i can see it either way i guess yeah um cool let's go into another yeah. another point because we don't want to take up t i don't want to make this podcast just one oh, long yep, yep. talk about this which we could a lot of co content creators did but a lot of you have also been saying that you want our podcast to be longer so we can just make this <laughs> uh, a little bit of a longer segment at the beginning okay cool how will the meta shift to adjust to changing winds and what new commanders do you think will rise to the top? I love this question. This is what makes this ban. This is like the, yeah. the silver lining, right? Yep. This is the silver lining, 100%. What do we predict is going to be really powerful? All right, y'all, start us off. What are, what are some decks that you think are just benefiting from this? Oh, I honestly right away think about Kinnon. Kinnon, yep. for sure. And and related to what ban? Just Nadu? Dockside? What, are, Dockside. what, what, what makes Kinnon so much more powerful? I think one of the things that Kinnon brought for a long time well, what people kind of struggled to kind of figure out was like how to deal with Kinnon's turn for turn explosiveness it's not only mm -hmm. ramps you right like just by being out all of your mana rocks yeah. go a little bit harder right including that that mana crypt right like being able to put down a turn one Kinnon into a mana crypt plus like a soul ring like you're creating you still have five no four leftover generic mana right like from mm -hmm. playing down a, a kinnon through like whatever means you want to do it so i think that dockside being gone kind of kills a lot of the dynamic nature of some of these other decks that could like try to win over kinnon whereas kinnon wants kind of like at least the popular list wants a grindy like value fest right where i'm just not going to even cast spells i'm going to put things on the battlefield and you have to deal with this yeah and you, yeah. you beat that by trying to explode with a big dockside count that Kinnon is kind of feeding at times uh, over what Kinnon's trying to do. My initial thought is just like ep Esper stocks to the moon. That was my first thought, to be honest. I think we could even see Xur the Enchanter start being really good because, you know, before a big downside to playing Xur was that you're just feeding dockside count. So I could see Zer come back and make a resurgence. I think Bant, specifically Derevi, I think Derevi wasn't hit too hard by this. So I think that Derevi could see more play. Yep. Obviously, 
Esper good stuff like Malcolm Timna is going to be really strong. Really any Timna deck because they weren't super reliant on Mana Crypt nor Jeweled Lotus in the first place to get their commander out. Um, I think all Dargo decks are really hurting. Oh, very yeah. similarly to Corvold. I, I really, my heart goes out to all the Dargo players out there. I think Demir is real strong. I think so too. Yuriko. Your favorite ninja, Yuriko, yep. could be making a resurgence. I could definitely see that being possible. I don't think that any of the really super S tier decks were affected besides Sisse, I guess. Sisse definitely felt the, the burn on this, but I think like Blue Farm, Rogsai, those are still gonna even Najila, like yes, you feel bad because you don't have your jeweled lotus for just to turn one Najila. I don't know. As a Najila player, can you speak on how much this hurts Najila? I actually kinda of feel like it might help. A little bit. Nigeria. Really? Yeah. Whoa, what a hot take. Uh, okay. I think, again, it slows it down, and Najila always has the beats plan, right? It always has, even in this Orcish Bowmaster world. And, like, a slower That's meta, true. which we are all kind of predicting for at least a little while, a slower meta. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to find out at the boil, right? The boil choose is going to happen in a couple weeks. And uh, unless they adopt the old ban list right like i'm not sure what how that's shaking out yet that's I not gonna happen I'll, i mean we could talk about that too real quick people who are thinking that they're gonna reverse the bans that is not going to happen i don't think so not it's just all. not going to happen could it split maybe i don't know but i i highly doubt the rc is gonna come back and say <laughs> just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh man i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> But to continue on your point about Najila, I do like the idea that if the meta slows down, then Najila beats can still be potent. But yeah, we've talked about a lot of these lists. And I think like like you mentioned before, I think Kinnon's going to be more powerful just because the Simic players who are all playing Nadu are just going to go back to Kinnon. Like nothing ever happened. Right. And the only other list I would mention is Timnathrasius. Yep. Yeah, TMT is definitely going to be strong. Um, doesn't rely on Jeweled Lotus, doesn't really rely on Mana Crypt. And of course, can't play Dockside. So right. I think TNT will will be really, really strong yep. in the grindy meta. I think that kind of covers approximately everything that we wanted to talk about in this CEDH groundbreaking news <laughs> <laughs> uh, emergency press conference type thing. Um, but let's get into our actual card for today. All right, yeah. Let's get into it. What? did you bring to us today uh, the card i brought today i actually had decided on before these bands and it's actually kind of really um well not that relevant now but it's like it, it goes back to a color that we don't see as much play but i think we will now um it's a green card called seed time seed time it is one generic uh and a green uh it's an instant that says play seed time only during your turn Take an extra turn after this one if an opponent played a blue spell this turn. Flavor text. The hippo grows wings to fight the condor. Nantuko teaching. Mm. And thank you to Miko from our Discord, uh, which you can join and make suggestions or just come chat about magic in general. They brought this card to us and um, <laughs> kind of presented some really in uh, interesting information. They said that this card only sees play in... 0.26% of decks that run green. I, I also double-checked, and it's only seen in 39 decks, primarily uh, Paco and Halden, uh, which is uh, one of the few decks that has more than one or three lists representing uh, this card in it. And so this is very fringe. And so I thought it was just really interesting. Miko sounded really excited about it, and they made some good points that uh, I'd like to start talking about. Uh, my very first point, since we just started talking about how the meta might shift, is I think we're going to see a little bit more of a resurgence of green. Folks are going to be looking for consistent ways to make sure that they're able to produce mana and resource in general. And I think dorks, even in this Orcish Bowmaster meta, are still... People are going to be trying it at the very least, right? Where this meta settles in a few months, that's yet to be seen. But I think that green is back and um, it's time to dust off some of those green staples. And now is a great time to start testing spice, right? And in this moment right now for the next couple of weeks, month, two months... Just start testing things. For those folks who kind of have been playing for a long time, yeah, maybe this message isn't for you. You've tried it, you know. But like new cards have been really introduced since before Dockside was printed, which, uh, you know, there was a time before Dockside was the meta. And so uh, I think that now's a really great time to kind of try to try out some green spells. And this one's just really interesting to me. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree. I think that with 
the hit that Red took, I think that there's <laughs> you, <laughs> and I'm not sure yet because I've you know I've only played a handful of games now with this new ban list, but. It could be the argument that, you know, red might not be worth playing anymore, but green might be. So I don't know. I, with Underworld Breach still being a thing, red's still probably really powerful. Yeah, still pretty strong. But at the same time, if you're going to splash in a color, you know, I, I kind of like the idea of testing green. There definitely is space for it. And like I said, I, I think the big point I want to stress here is like, now is the time to just start testing, right? Like this meta shakes up yeah. things so much. The CEDH we knew, like literally on Sunday, it's a different meta. And so now's a real time to kind of try things and kind of push for what I think you and I have been trying to get people to do for a while. It's just try to scratch that part of your brain, like start brewing, tr start trying out different cards and uh, seeing how it shakes out in this new space. My second point comes from Miko themselves, and they said that um, if you're in a counterspell war on your turn, you're trying to present a win, you could consider cutting a counterspell. Because you can kind of have that sack war and commit what you think is going to be necessary uh, to bait out more, mm -hmm. more, more counter spells and whatnot. And chances are they're playing blue spells on your turn that so to meet these conditions. So those conditions, I think, are going to kind of happen, happen naturally in the game. I know that when I play Kinnon, chances are... I'm going to get countered, even by trying to just be uh, having my kinning cast, right? Some people are trying to not let that hit at all. So I can't get any activations. I can't get any mana value, extra mana value out of my rocks or my dorks. So chances are you're going to be, you know, going to see counter spells thrown your way on your turn. So those conditions aren't that difficult to meet, I think. Mm -hmm. And you can then wait for that dust to settle and then just cast this to go back into another turn. and. Even if it isn't a win, because what I think the best point about this card is, um, my last point is, there is no downside to this card, right? There is no, uh, especially at the two cost mana value for like extra turn spells, uh, there are one, two, three, yeah. four, five, five cards that let you take an extra turn for just two mana uh, of any sort, right? Yep. Uh, the only other one without a downside where you lose the game is Time Walk. And that card has been banned for a while. Yeah. Are the other three Final Fortune, Warrior's Oath, and Last Chance? Yep, yep, yep. Boom. Boom. Um, they all have the stipulation that if you take an extra turn, and then at the end of that turn, you lose the game. Yep. The, n the next kind of spell that lets you get away with an extra turn without like a real downside starts costing you more, right? Capture of Jing Zhao yeah. costs five, right? Temporal ma manipulation costs five. Time warp costs five. And so for yeah. a low cost, there are some hoops to jump through. This is mm -hmm. pretty fairly cost. It's going to be something that kind of happens in the game as anyways. And so it's going to allow you to potentially squeeze in a turn that just allows you to get more value or to win the game whichever you kind of need but if you don't win it right if you were just trying to dig you still yeah get to play the game you still have a chance right yeah <laughs> yeah like can't argue with that taking extra turns that don't kill you <laughs> seems pretty good <laughs> all right do you have any more positives for seed time before i get into the downsides um no, not really. I think that it's a pretty face value card to me at the kind of reading it like um, it's an extra turn spell with no downside. And I think that in green, a, a color that, again, uh, you don't actually see. It's kind of a pie break. Right. Yeah. So bring me your downsides. Yeah, I mean, I was really excited when you brought this card up um, just because I think it's it's one of those pieces that has a high ceiling it can be really powerful i think taking an extra turn can be one of the most powerful things that you can do in magic the gathering it's better than drawing cards because you when you take your extra turn you get to draw a card yeah. <laughs> so i mean i think it's one of the most powerful things that you can do i don't think anyone would would rebuke that taking an extra turn is good <laughs> yeah agreed. unless there's a shield out and then you don't <laughs> want to draw a card because you're at two life <laughs> well and maybe that's a problem but now you don't have to worry about that mana crypt trigger that i know at least i've died to before <laughs> oh true you don't have to worry about losing your life to mana crypt <laughs> too soon? anymore Probably too soon. 
too too soon too soon oh no i'm just kidding <laughs> all right well i'll get up my downsides for this obviously the first one is just going to be the qualifier for this card and there's multiple yeah <laughs> really big ones otherwise this card would be bonkers, bonkers if there weren't mm-hmm. so let's kind of go through it the first one play seed time only during your turn mm. so even though it's an instant it really doesn't get the full effect of an instant card you can't play it on your opponent's turns ever so really this might as well say a sorcery except for the fact that oh just kidding you can play it in response to a blue spell being cast so yep. i maybe it's a hot take but whether this card was printed as an instant or a sorcery i don't think it matters Ooh, actually it would mm, it, it kind of does matter but at the same time it like doesn't really matter too much I mean, do you think this card would be that much different if it was a, if it was a sorcery over an instant? I do think so because there is a world if you're in um, uh, Golgari colors, right, and you have Necropotence, mm-hmm. right. Um, this allows you to cast it uh, during your cleanup, right? Uh, yeah. So during your true. cleanup, that's you get true. to cast this still on your turn, still on mm, your turn, and it's not that. quite a born upon a wind, but like it kind of acts like a born upon the wind it because says, sculpt a seven sculpt go a seven next. go yeah. into your turn after you've drawn you know a conservative 20 a right or 30 Ooh. right that could have been one of your p- positives yeah that this is just a banger with necropotence right and in go okay, we'll, we'll yeah, add maybe. that in no uh, yeah positive <laughs> or just thanks, mm-hmm. thanks Kyle. yeah i'm finding you some more positives but anyway let's get back to the main downside which is you can only cast it during your turn so it's obviously a huge setback you are are sitting there. Well, I guess I can't really talk about this without saying the second qualifier because so yeah, you got to talk about both of them. Yep. Not only is it on your turn, but you have to wait for your opponent to cast a blue spell. True. So you're you're sitting there waiting to be able to cast this on your turn. This card will be dead in hand so often. The only times that it's not is going to be when you're trying to win the game and your opponents are actively trying to stop you with their blue counter spells or the chance that you get super lucky and one of like maybe two or three popular blue instants are cast on your turn so like i think the magic christmas dreamland for this card is you just have two mana up and then someone goes in your end step i'm going to cast a mystical tutor and then you go okay perfect excellent i'm gonna cast seed time yeah baby like that's the magic christmas dreamland is no one's able to stop that from happening but at that point you're in such a weird position because you had to keep two mana up which you can't just predict that a mystical tutor you can't play cedh in the hopes oh, that maybe. someone's gonna cast a blue spell in your end step you can't play like that. So in reality, your board state is shit because you weren't able to develop with the two mana. Or maybe, I guess, in the other scenario, you have only developed mana. You have no payoff. So you're just sitting there awkwardly praying somebody casts a blue spell in your turn. So between those two qualifiers, it's it makes it really difficult to want to play seed time. I definitely hear you on that one. And I think I agree. Um, And I think the part of me that, uh, again, this is kind of like the pre versus post ban kind of like meta and like how my brain is working is like, yeah, I did just say earlier in this podcast, like we talked about maybe seeing more uh, Thrasios decks in general and Thrasios Passios is a saying for a reason, right? Like this is a commander that kind of likes to um, kind of wait, right? Hold up mana anyways. And so, in a green deck, right, you may, if you're playing it also along with blue, you're probably going to be potentially holding up mana anyways. Um, I know with Kinnon, right, and I think that's what, that part of my brain that's played a lot of Kinnon, where, like, I see. I've see. i also have to make decisions. Like, do I activate Kinnon on my turn, or do I just wait, right? Uh, if I have a Seaborn out, I'm waiting, right? Like, I'm just going to let you do whatever, and I'll, I'll do that on your end step. And so interesting so that's a natural progression of playing those decks and then if you get an extra turn then good for you yeah and then is the thought right process. right it's like i can kind of mm-hmm. wait and kind of bait things out and generally i think also like when you're also playing in blue especially like i know you play italian like you played a lot of turns where you go okay cool 
I'm just gonna pass here, right? Because yeah, but that's in blue. This is a green card, right? But like, I, I think I'm, I'm immediately partnering this with with blue. But yes, you're right. There is a world where if you're in Gruul gotcha. or uh, Golgari, yeah, this is probably not as good. Got you. So if you're saying any green blue plus color pairing might be able to do this just because of Thrasios or Kinnon. Yeah. The thought process yep, yep, that yep. it's more seamless. Yep. Okay, so you don't have to worry about holding a mana. I like that point. So the next point, my second point, kind of just gets into like the opportunity cost of this card. What I mean by that is that it makes sequencing kind of awkward. I, I do think it's an advanced card. If you have this card in your hand and you're seven cards of a hand, right, and you're able to cast it, and it's maybe it's early on and you're thinking to yourself like, okay, maybe a Missile Tutor might be cast on this turn or maybe someone will try to cast this on my turn or maybe if I try to go to combat, someone will Pongify or Rapid Hybridization. Like you kind of have to, to get the maximum benefit out of this card, you have to sequence properly and sometimes sequencing quote unquote properly for it might lead you to not actually develop your board. Correct. So if you're sitting there being like, oh man, I can play this Arcade Signet or I can hold up Seed Time with the hopes that XYZ thing will happen. Or I can play this creature that might buff up another creature when I go to combat or you know, play a Timna or play something else that gives me an extra trigger off of combat, but I really want to hold the Seed Time up just in case I get to Seed Time. Like That puts you in a weird dilemma as a pilot that I'm not super excited about. I think it kind of... Uh, it, it'll put you in this like uh, chasing the dragon type effect mm. where you're just like always waiting and like hoping that you can, you're always wanting to hold up two mana so that you can hope that you can gotcha somebody with your seed time effect. And I think that you're just going to wait and wait and wait, and it's just not going to happen. And you're going to end up putting yourself in a scenario where you should have developed your board, but instead you decided to hold up mana in the hopes that somebody would fight you on your own turn. Feels kind of weird in that sense. So that's kind of how I describe the second point, which is just like, it's an opportunity cost equation. I totally see that. So my third point is that this card kind of makes alarm bells go off. <laughs> Why is <laughs> that? People. Why, why is that? It, yeah, I mean, take an extra turn. I think that if you're in a counter war and go with somebody else and you end up, when you do get to cast this card, one, it's an instant. So it's the easiest thing for you for something to get to counter rather. So like a dispel can hit this. Any of the non-creature spells can hit this. Reed. So it's the easiest thing to counter. And the second you put this on the stack, alarm bells will go off from your opponents. They don't want you to just get an extra turn. That can be really bad, especially going against a deck like Kinnon or Thrasios that now gets to untap and have another activation. Or if you're Thrasios, maybe two or three activations because you got a guy's cradle out. <laughs> like it, it can get real dangerous real quick and it's easy to stop. So if you're under this assumption that in order to play this, something else had to have already been stuffed on your turn or countered on your turn, you're not going to have a lot of mana left over. And now you're playing seed time and you're probably not going to have backup for that seed time on top of it because you already cast something in the first place that drew heat in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like a like a safety valve a little bit where you're like, okay, my main win con was stuffed, so then I want to be able to just try again with this card. But there's re really not a lot of deck lists that I think can can consistently present like that when they get stuffed, especially not in green. I don't know. I'm kind of starting to ramble. But my third point is just that that it just makes alarm bells go off and you might not be able to protect it just based on how sequencing works. I, I think you make a really good point. And so I guess I'm going to I'm going to use that point to kind of segue into something I've been going to try to start answering for folks because um, I've seen it in comments is like so a card like this, uh, I think, honestly, I, I know you and I had already kind of text about it a little bit is like can kind of see this in a core bold. I know like you're probably not going to say that, but like there are many times I've seen you play and you're making like at least in, like you know, even Monday, right? I saw you you making mana and like actually having to go into combat with like mana still available, right? Like and I think there were a couple times where there was just green available. It was a game where you were you you took a, a pretty decently a decent turn turn right and that yeah. you were cooking you were digging. That, <laughs> actually that sequence would have been crazy right. for the listeners what ended up happening was my i had a war and chatterfang combo going in corvold 
but somebody talon gates to madara my chatter fang and in response i could only um oh, sorry in my upkeep or something like yeah. that i don't remember exactly I what i think happened. it was your upkeep and so we had like this 20 minute like in kyle's upkeep yeah. turn where I was, I was responding by activating Warren on top of things, but it end, ended up putting me in a board state where I couldn't win at that time. And then there was a root maze out, which was making the treasures tap. There, it was just a shit show. But a seed seed time would have been really good in that turn. That's for sure. Mainly because I also because <laughs> I definitely still think I, I I played things and then I got fought by blue yes. spells or yes. counter spells. It was just a weird situation. Right. But that was such a weird game. It was. It was a. <laughs> but it can't. It does show that it could be good because at that time, if I had seed time and I could untap with all my treasures, and my mm -hmm. chatter fan comes back in, sure, it would have been great. Because you're in green. If you're playing this card, you're already in green, and I think so one of the reasons that people think green is weakest, myself included, in the CDH pie, right? Not casual. Like is because it isn't as explosive. It can struggle to to string together wins. And like you can can get stopped, and I think there are a lot of players that play green in their commander colors, like that go, ah oh, man, if I only had an extra turn, I I definitely have thought that with a, a Kinnon, uh, right? Kinnon can even struggle to like close out that game sometimes after they've made infinite mana or whatever it may be. Like they need that turn cycle to go all the way around for them to try again. And so, um, and I know at least with Kinnon and the few times I've played like a Thrasios deck, like. I can kind of struggle to kind of put it together, especially if it's post-combat. Mm -hmm. And if I'm presenting that much of a threat, alarm barrels are going off. I might only need to present one, like, tasty morsel of, like, a threat for somebody to try to counter that for me to potentially yeah. get an extra turn. Yeah. Or you just politic it really hard. You'd be like, all right, I cast Polywog Prodigy. Right. Boom. Let's see if you guys have it. Yeah. <laughs> And hope somebody <laughs> counters it. I like that card. <laughs> Just hit him with the sprinkle him with the let's see if you guys have it. <laughs> <laughs> like this polywog prodigy is just gonna be a game ender. <laughs> oh, adding more positives to your to your fire here, yeah. That's right. <laughs> you can politic your way into getting something stupid countered. Can, can somebody? Can anybody <laughs> counter this? Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> um uh you just cast a dark ritual for no reason be like any mental missteps that would really stop that would me really right suck <laughs> that would really suck if somebody mental misstepped this. i'm gonna start politicking every time like this i'm gonna slot this into a kin index or any of my i, I think i only play kinnon uh i have been thinking about thrasios timna uh and that's how i'm gonna talk every time just bait just bait, bait people into bait. countering your stuff and hit him with the seed time <laughs> All right, yeah, let's get into our favorite points uh, that each other brought to the table. So, yeah, what point did I make that you think is the biggest downside for seed time? I think that while this card gives a very simple effect, I think your point about the whole, the, all of the qualifiers plus the sequencing, right? That is... Oh, the double trouble. Right, it is uh -oh. a double trouble, right? It is like a... It is going to be a card, again, it's one of my favorite types of cards, I guess, where it's going to force you to learn, right? Like, and you will probably whiff and you think to yourself, Yah is an idiot. Why did he convince me to put this card in? Because I can't <laughs> get it to work. It hasn't, nobody cast blue spells, right? Like, yeah. again... And yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to bring that in because I thought it was a weak point, but since you brought it up... The fact that this card could be actually useless if you're in a pod that has no blue, which I think is kind of in ridiculous the post for tournament yeah, CEDH. Yeah. In the post-Oxide world, who knows? You know, you could go against mono blue, mono white, and Orzov, and you're sitting there with your seed time and cursing Yaw for convincing you that this is good in Kinnon. And okay. but. It could but you're also probably cursing Kyle because he convinced you to put Whoa. carpet of flowers in. <laughs> true, true. Right, and now you're that's playing. That's true. That's a very a mono card. red, and I and I still th and I think carpet of flowers is still very very playable. But that's for tournament CEDH. If you are playing with your friends and you you know that your friends don't put this card do in. Do not yes. play blue. Yes. Do not put don't this put card this in. in. If we have to tell you that. Please. 
<laughs> I'm questioning your deck building skills, but that's okay because okay. we're here yep. to help. <laughs> uh, how about uh, what point of mind do you think best supports for why you may want to slot this in? I think it's the fact that there's no downside when you do cast it. I think it's pretty sweet. When you kind of just show all the other extra turn spells that cost five mana to do the thing, and then this one can do, can basically like cheat in an extra turn spell, I think it's really cool. We didn't talk about it too much, but post Nas, this card's pretty sweet. So you just have a ton of cards. So if there's any green deck that is also on Ad Nauseam, mm which is why we were kind of talking about this for Corvold. I kind of like it. If you have a bunch of mana and, you know, you probably fought to get your Nas off, maybe this card's pretty cool. But at the same time, Corvold's in such a weird place right now, post Dockside, that I don't even know if this is going to yeah, want. I agree. And if it's even going to play this, it's probably going to be like mid-range Corvold, who knows? So, um, but yeah, I think it's an interesting point that you can potentially get an extra turn for only two mana. Seems good. All right, Kyle. It's time. Have we gotten you to change your mind? Are you going to say what all the listeners are hoping Miko is hoping you're going to say? I'm going to I'm going to go that route. Miko is wondering, have we changed your mind? The answer is no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that the qualifiers are just too much. It's too much. I think that if you're in a scenario where there's like this counter war, and you know you want to play seed time to go next to like cheat your way in before the next person gets to untap like I just, it just feels really niche and it just feels really difficult to cast if there is someone who's a kinnon player or a tnt player who likes to really hold up their mana and they play this card if you give me anecdotal evidence that says that this card is absolute gas i'm all ears but for now no not good enough for cedh quite yet and maybe that just needs more printings if there were more blue spells that are just cast just because on people's turns like especially early turns i'd be more interested but if i'm just sitting here in the early turns praying that somebody's gonna cast a mystical tutor and i do nothing else that's just not, it's just not consistent enough for me at all points in the game. Well, we'll see. I think the meta, again, like the more we talk about it, the more excited I kind of get to see what the, the games are going to be like. Like I know a couple of our pod mates are brewing up Yuriko again, like because they're really sure this is the ninja's yep. time to shine, right? Like in there, they love yep. to just kind of like cast weird, weird spells that we've never heard of um, uh, on, on turns and whatnot to try to manipulate their top deck. And so well, Miko, I tried. Um, if you thought of anything or... <laughs> you did a great job, uh, yeah. If, and this card is good enough for us to have the conversation. Yeah. So the fact that you even got this card on the table is something. <laughs> it means something. It means it's testable. <laughs> because the listeners don't know how many cards I bring to Kyle in a given week where he just doesn't even <laughs> respond to me beyond a laugh. <laughs> L <laughs> yeah, sends me a card. And I just say, LOL. <laughs> oh, it just goes back to that stern scolding uh, Photoshop I did that I'll put on the screen for the listeners. The best Photoshop That's ever. So good. Where I yell, I'm yelling at you. Yeah, I'm scolding you yeah for bringing us casual cards in a CEDH podcast. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it, it wasn't that bad. I think that this is something to think about for sure, but I'm not sold. Anyway. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode on Seed Time, and thank you to Miko for today's recommendation. I'd also like to thank Claire for commenting and giving us kind of a good framework for speaking on all the news that just came out on the CEDH community in general with the bands. I definitely think that as our community continues to grow, it's really nice to hear that you know, our community members want to kind of know what our opinions are on it's these things. Cool. So thank you for those suggestions. And if you have any other suggestions for any content or cards that you'd like us to review, please go ahead and leave a comment in the comments down below and, you know, give us a suggestion for our next card or our next topic to talk about. Please direct your attention to the description down below for links to our link tree where you'll find links to all the places that we host our podcasts, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, as well as links to our Discord and Patreon. 
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode, and we will hope to see you next week. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.